Today I'll be teaching on the flaming sword. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. Now Moses wrote the book of Genesis. God gave him some revelation, didn't he? Whoo, Moses saw some stuff. In the book of Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24, we see at the east gate. That is an east gate, church. Of the Garden of Eden were cherubims, angels, and a flaming sword. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 7 and 8 says, To you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven. Woo! Praise God! That's going to be a day right there. From heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. Taking vengeance on them that know not God. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. So that flaming sword has been standing at that east gate. Ever since Adam was driven, driven out of the garden. When God drove him out, God placed that at the east gate. It's been waiting there all this time. The flaming fire are the ministering angels. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7 says, And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? Also read the book of Psalms 104 and verse 4. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Today, I send the ministering angels to each and every one of you that they may minister to you because you are the heirs of salvation. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo! That's good right there. That's good right there, Lord. So the sword is at the east gate. It is the sword of vengeance. God's letting Adam and the world know the day of vengeance is coming. The day that God will take vengeance. So all of you that have been troubled, rest. Because the day's coming. Jesus is coming with vengeance. Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 8. The day of the Lord is vengeance. Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 17. The garment of vengeance. You know that armor you put on every day, church? In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 14, the armor. That armor that you put on every day is the garment of vengeance. That day is going to come when we will return with the mighty angels and with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we will be wearing that armor, the garment of vengeance. We will be with Jesus and, and we will get to witness him, his vengeance upon the wicked. All those that do not believe in Jesus Christ, all of those that blaspheme God and curse his word and refuse to hear the gospel of our Lord and Savior, they just don't know, church. There's coming a day of vengeance. Because they refuse to listen. They refuse to hear the word of God. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 and 8 says to us. It says to you. Listen to me church. It says to you. Who are troubled. Have you been troubled church? Yes. We are all troubled. Amen. To you who are troubled. Rest. I like that word right there. Rest. Amen. Rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven, praise God with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance, listen to me church, on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day of vengeance will come. To all of you, for all of you that have been troubled, been tormented, 
been attacked, been cursed at. Whoo! I know, I, I hear you, church. I can stand with you on that one. Been called all manner of evil, spoken against you falsely. All of those that reject you and cuss you out and curse you and say you're stupid, say you're crazy, say you don't know nothing, none of this is going to happen. There ain't a God. There ain't a hell. There ain't a heaven. Woo! To all of you, I got some news for you. All of you that believe there ain't no hell. All of you that believe there ain't no God. Get ready. Because you will see Jesus. Being revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in a flaming fire, taking vengeance on you. So if I were you, I'd repent right now. Say, I'm sorry, Lord. God, forgive me for all my sins that I have sinned. Help me, Lord. Help me. God, I believe in you. I believe in you, God. I trust you, God. I know there's a heaven and a hell. I know that 2,000 years ago you sent Jesus Christ into the world to die because God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. God doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants all to come to repentance. He wants all to be saved. But it is not the choice of God. It is your choice. You must choose today who you will serve because I promise you the day is coming that the devil and the beast will stand before you and you're going to make that choice in that day and if you choose God you'll die for the word of God it is the truth I'm not lying to you and if you choose the beast then in the end you will go into the lake of fire if you receive the mark and you worship the devil and you worship the beast so today today is the day of salvation Let's not wait until the end. Let's do it now. Repent. Ask God to forgive you. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Believe that 2,000 years ago he died on the cross and you were washed in his precious blood. That Jesus is the only way to God. There is not another way. Whoever teaches there is another way is a liar. And the truth is not in them. For Jesus is the only way to God. And believe that he died. And on the third day, the power of God raised Jesus Christ from the grave. And that he is sitting on the right hand of God. And where your Lord and Savior is, he will come one day for us. And where he is, we will be also. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Church, let me say something while I got enough of time. We are not going back into the garden where Adam was. God created another paradise. Where Adam is was sin. God will destroy that third heaven because it was the place of sin. The third heaven is where Adam was. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 3, 4. That's where Adam was. That place will be destroyed. Jesus did not ascend into the third heaven. Jesus ascended far above all the heavens. So where God is, there was not a place prepared for man. It was the spiritual realm. It was only a place and a dwelling place of spirits. No human being had ever entered into the place where God dwelt. No human could stand in the presence of our God. But Jesus, receiving the new body, Amen, church. The new body. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1. He received that new body that was able to go into the presence of God. And that's why Jesus says he goes to prepare a place for you. He, because if he was going to the third heaven, there's already been a place prepared for man. We're not going there, church. We're going to ascend above all the heavens and we're going to the place where God dwells, where the Father dwells, a place that no man had ever been before. That's the place that Jesus is preparing for you and I. We will ascend to the Father's heaven, the dwelling place of our God. 
because we will receive the new body. Amen. You know the story about the wine. The new wine cannot be put in an old bottle. It'll bust. That's what God, Jesus is trying to tell you, church. He's trying to say that new wine has to be placed in a new bottle. Our new body. That new wine and that new body will all be put together. And we will all ascend into the furthest heaven where God dwells. The place that no man has ever been before. Not even Adam. Woo! Glory! Hallelujah! Oh, I'm ready, church. I'm ready to ascend to the Father as heaven, to where my God is. I'm ready to be in His presence. Amen. I, I'm telling you, when I get there, I've already told God, I'm going to pull up a chair, and I want you to start at the beginning, not my beginning, your beginning. I want to know everything there is to know about my God. Tell me, Father, everything there is to know about my Father. I desire it, Father. Tell me everything there is about my Father. The one that created me, my God, my love, and my life. Oh, what a day that's going to be, church. What a glorious day that will be to be in the presence of all powerful Almighty God, the Creator, the Creator. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait for that day. Glory. Thank you, church. Thank you so much for being my friend and for loving me and praying for me. God bless you, church. God bless you.